Hi everyone, Gothic Witch here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the next video. This video is called Blooding the Runes and the Poppet Doll. Basically a form of DNA magic. Very powerful and very interesting. Here we go. Hi everyone, back again with a new one. Now, I always start off with my, if you get a new set of runes, it's a good idea to put your own energy into them. I like to start off with Odin's rune when I can find it. Um, gosh. It's the rune of Anzus. And when I can find it, we can use it. But what I do is put my own influence into it. Ah, there it is. Now this is the rune Anzus ansas or however you want to pronounce it but it is basically odin's room transformation it's all about moving forwards with magic as well because odin was given magic he was given the runes he was given cedra he was given everything to do with that part of him um the part of the woman seer became part of him and he used it he hung on the tree for nine days to receive the knowledge and so when you get, get magic you always have to give in like he gave his eye he gave his eye to receive the inner sight and when you get some new runes I always start off with this one because it's basically Odin was given them and that's his rune and I just think it's good to ask that you can do this now when I do this I ask a blessing before and you may ask how do you personalize it well I obviously couldn't do this in front of you guys but if you look here, we have blood and urine and saliva, all from moi. Um, you can't really do it in front of people, so you don't need a lot. You know, you don't need to take it. Like, all I do is prick my finger and as I'm dropping the blood into the container, I'm saying blood of life, blood of within blood of my essence please use this power from my blood to anoint my runes and make them part of me it's always good to make them part of you I'm not saying you have to do it but it is a good idea to do it if you're going to use them and aid other people in reading for them um, you can buy runes or you can make them I have made mine um, this set was actually bought for me I haven't really used them and so I thought it would be a good idea to do the blooding today um, as it's a new beginning it's spring it's a new time of joy and an abundance so 
what I would suggest you do is seek a prayer from Odin. So I would say, Odin, Father, All Father, please allow me to use this, your room, in your name, to connect with me within. I seek this from you to allow me to proceed. Thank you, Great Father, for your communications that you bring, you brought forth the power of the runes to practitioners worldwide. The mysteries allowing people to find what they need to know. I ask a blessing on these runes as I blood them today. I thank you for all you do. O oh, Father, O oh, Great One, O oh, Father, I give the honour to you to be present with us as we blood. Skull. So once you've done that and you feel like you have, you know, okay to go ahead, you take your first rune and your... I don't know if you can see that, blood, urine and saliva and you just take your finger and you just think about Odin, think about why you want to blood them, why you want them to be part of you, oh Odin, bring my seer ability in to fruition, adorn this room with my energy and my power. And just keep rubbing it in while meditating until it absorbs into the stone. And you can think about communication. There you go. And it sinks in and you wouldn't know that it's actually on there. So it's not like it's going to be gunky or anything like that. Which is why you add urine to it and to thin it down. And also to add some saliva. Because this all has your DNA in it. And... DNA is a marvellous thing. Now I'm going to do the rune which is Freya's next because she is my patron. She is my goddess and that is Fehu. So I'm going to blood this one next. Oh Freya, come upon this and honour this, my energy into this, my rune, your rune, our rune. Oh... Freya, be present today while I blood my blood and my saliva into this and my urine into this, the rune of you. Oh, oh. Bringing forth all that I need. Thank you. And again, it absorbs in, my friends, so you haven't really got to worry about it being sticky or anything like that. Now you just carry on, really, going through and meditating on what you would like these runes to do for you. Are you going to use them? Are you going to take them and do readings professionally? Or are you going to keep them for yourself and use in spell work? Are you just going to keep them and you just want your energy? It's a good idea once you've blooded them to also sit them on the window ledge on the full moon and leave them overnight. It will add the great mother's energy also into it and you know it all helps. Just keep blooding away 
and yeah it does take a little while to do but there's 26 of them in all and some people say do you need to blood the blank one well yes you still need your energy in it and the blank will be used in certain ways so I would personally do that so as you see it all absorbs in and when it comes to making runes I use polymer clay for mine um, and yeah uh, now while we've got the blood available I was thinking maybe showing you how to make a clay fifth path or as some people know it pop it doll because you can use the blood urine and spittle in the doll that you're making and represent yourself for any healing work you want to do so I think you're going to get bored if I just keep showing you all this so I'm going to do the blood in later of the rest of them. I'll keep the ones I've done out. And that's what you do. You just keep blood in them. And then when you've finished blood in them, find a place on the window ledge or outside if you've got somewhere outside that you can do it. And um, leave them overnight on a full moon. I mean, you can use any form of the moon, but it's fullest, obviously, at the full moon. Now, I'm going to get some clay, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. It's um, a different type of magic. You don't need a lot of clay. It's not got to be huge. But what you want also, when you're doing the clay, is you want to think about the person that you're making I mean this has got a bad name really it really has and it shouldn't have because people have taken puppet dolls and turned them into um, something that's negative you know doing horrible things to people and yeah really yes people can do that but it's very irregular for a proper practitioner of magic to want to harm anybody and so I would say it is not a bad thing to make a puppet doll for healing healing purposes um, anything really I mean if you want something to happen like you want a job you see yourself sitting with a piece of paper you can move the doll around you can do things with it but it needs to be made into the shape of a person then you add your pieces with the blood and all that on uh, at different parts of the body. Um, when you're making a cloth one, you can actually put hair inside of it, nail clippings, stuff like that. But, I mean, you don't need all of that because your blood's got everything in it. Plus, you know, your saliva's got DNA. They can get a lot from that. And... Um, yeah, so it's it's basically how you feel about it. I know some people put hair, hair from both below and above, hair, and then also nail clippings from toes and fingers. Right, so this is this is a, this doll's going to be me. So basically, there's my little head. <laughs> See my little head. <laughs> put that there, and then you want your body and then you want your arms and your legs obviously and um, it's easy to do it's quite soft to work with and you don't have to fire this in the oven because basically I'm showing you today how to make one but we will do the actual magic on another video because it's quite involved you have to give it life you have to make it part of you and give it life. And like you put the um, the runes on the windowsill to receive some energy, when you've made your poppet doll, you need to show the... Um, well, when I do it, I always do a circle and then we, we give it life by taking it to the quarters and saying that this is me, this is me and that I will be doing work on it and that will they help me to do this. Now you don't have to have a big body, 
it depends what you're going to do. I mean, say for example, somebody had um, breast cancer, you could put uh, breasts on there, and then when we get round to doing the magic, you would then insert the pins around the area. But for me, I'm not going to be really working on anything like that. Mine's more about my eyes and my, my stomach and my bones. So I'm going to just make a little body like this. Hasn't got to be perfect. <laughs> Put the head on it. And then just some arms and some legs. I mean, if you want to get really personal, you could cut a little bit of hair off and stick it on the head. But I don't see the purpose. You've got everything in that blood. So, we just do a couple of arms, a couple of legs. You can clothe the doll if you want with a piece of your own cloth from something that you wear just to personalise it. But I, as I say, I don't really see the point in that. So I just, it's very quick. You just make a little person really. Um, it hasn't got to be perfect. The other thing I want you to realise is, if you do make this, and remember it's going to be you, it's going to be you, so think about what you're doing with it after, um, you know, it's it's real, I mean it's got your energy in it, so anything that happens to the doll while you're working with this, it will feel, it will know, so don't do something like put it in a closed drawer. Because you might find you get breathing difficulties. Um, and you say, oh really? But yes, yes, this sort of thing can happen. And you have to be careful. If you're partaking in any form of DNA work, you need to be very careful what you're doing. And it's it can be very dangerous. And you don't want to risk. That's why I suggest you do it on yourself first just to see how powerful it really is and then once it's once you've seen that you know if you're going to do work for other people exactly how to do it without causing them any harm or you any harm as I say it hasn't got to be perfect it's just a little doll yeah and the legs go at the bottom now I'm going to sit this when I've done it on my altar um, with with Freya, I'm going to sit her with Freya because that's who I am. I love Freya and Freya is part of me. So, legs, legs 11. <laughs> Here we go. Right, these are going to look funny, these legs, because I'm not putting a lot of effort into this. But we want a couple of little feet there. Okay. And again, the other side couple of little feet there and there we go as I say it's not really supposed to look like you it's just got your DNA on it so there we go that is as good as it's going to get you can put a little bit of hair on it if you can't bear to see something without any hair and um, you do just a like a wig type thing that goes over Okay, so let's get this softed up a little bit more. Um, I thought people would be interested in this subject because it's not something people go into. But I used to do a lot of this when I worked in Coven. <coughs> we could use it for all sorts of things. You know, at the end of the day, it's another form of magic. But it is a very strong one because you are using your bodily fluids and your DNA there you go right so there she is my little poppet doll okay that's all it is it's a little poppet doll and obviously you're not in it yet so you get your blood and I normally do the seven areas of the body or like you've got the head so put some blood there and then you've got your third eye, your eyesight there and your throat there, your 
fact you can just paint the whole doll to be honest it will all sink in and once it's sunk in it is becoming you so that's what I'm doing I mean you can do a little heart and stick it inside you can do um, some people open them up and put little things inside but this is going to sink in and so just coating it lightly with your blood urine and your um, saliva will absorb into it and as you go think about it this is you this is me yeah this is me on a bad day <laughs> a very bad day <laughs> I hope I don't look like this but this is part of you and it's and you're not going to keep it forever but what you do have to do is, and I will do a video on that after you've worked on it. After you've worked on it. There are ways of closing it down so that you don't find you get hurt if you stick it in the bean or get rid of it. You really don't want to get a comeback on this because this is very powerful magic very powerful indeed and not to be taken lightly my friends so there you go so there she is and that is my doll and it is all blooded now okay and I will stick it on my altar to dry I'm going to take the offering off and I'm going to put her there until I'm prepared to do the actual life giving it life ritual it's safe it, nothing can happen but you have to be aware that your DNA is on it so be very careful anyway um, the blood is an offering too but you need to say it's an offering so I would say to Freya and Odin I this day give part of myself as an offering to you for all the good that you give me and all the knowledge that I receive and all the lovely messages you give Raya, you are a wonderful goddess. And I am giving you the, my offering now of blood, urine and my DNA to connect us and be with me forever more. So might it be. And that, my friend, is how you do this. Um, I hope it's been enlightening. See, these have dried now. Yeah, there's not more anything else you can do, really. Um, and that that be it I think just a quick one I just thought you'd like to know how to do this and uh, I will be back with the next part which will be the actual ritual and the ritual will be casting the circle protecting us then taking it round um, and giving it life at the quarters and then you work out what you want to do, like physically to help. So say, for example, you had a broken leg. You could then put the pins in the area of the broken leg and the healing will go into that area. Um, it's uh, In some circles, you actually give birth to it. I know that sounds strange, but normally the high priestess will lay on the pentacle on the floor and she will have her arms wide up. Uh, the priest will do the honours by laying up on the top. She will hold a string attached to the doll in her mouth and lay it down between her legs. Um, the priest will then put his, well, they say put his seed, it's just his energy upon the doll. And then she will sometimes get birthing, uh, birthing pain and the doll is then taken up, pulled up, and the god holds it up, and then they take it around the circle at the quarters and give it life. That way it's being born. So, it, yeah, you can see why it can be a dangerous thing. You can also see that bad things can come of it. I know there was one where they give it life on a certain person and then they drowned in it and that person died. So you have to be very careful. Magic is, as I say, it is a form of power. 
and intent remember that guys you have to put your intent in but this is for healing and there's no way I would ever do a dark thing like that it's not part of me I, I'm not that type of a person but you could see how it could be misunderstood and used in the wrong way anyway I'm going to leave it there guys and hopefully I'll see you in the next video I am here hi <laughs> and from me now I say wherever you are whatever time of the day and night it is I'm wishing you a really happy day um house of a lang